everyone and welcome back to Video Game Esoterica. On this week's episode of On a Technicality, we're going to be finishing up our arcade fight stick build. You will see that we have a coin and a start button installed in the back. So now we have all six action buttons, our input buttons for coin and start, as well as our stick itself. Taking a look at the wiring on the inside, you're going to see this five pin harness for the joystick. And then each button has a positive and a ground pin. Doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, one can be ground, one can be positive. There isn't really any keying to them. So we have that harness for the joystick and then we have our common ground. So what we have here is all the supplies you're gonna need to be able to strip those wires out for use. On the left, we have a traditional pair of wire strippers and on the middle, we have wire cutters that are easily able to cut through that wire. If you don't have these things at your house, you don't need to run out and get them. You can accomplish everything with a traditional pair of nail clippers you're going to have to have some patience, but you definitely can do this with those nail clippers. So either way, when you cut the wire, you're just going to go ahead and use your strippers. You're going to put the wire in the correct size hole. It looks like I did a little bit of that off camera, but all you're going to do is put the wire in. You're going to pinch down on that, and then you're going to pull the wire. It works if you kind of wrap your finger around it uh, just to get a little bit of tension on that. What you're going to see now is I'm going to use the pair of nail clippers to do the same thing. I fail at first, I succeed the second try, and that is something you're going to see um, and experience. What you want to do is you want to put some downward pressure until you can cut that plastic sleeving um, all the way around. And then what you're going to do is just push down slightly and pull out on the clippers. And you are going to see, after I screwed up the first time on that second cut, I am able to pull the plastic sheathing out and then we have our bare wire ready to use. So now on the inside you will see that we have the joystick 5 pin connector hooked up. It only goes in one way, it is keyed. I suppose you could put it in incorrectly but it would take so much pressure you'd probably destroy the stick before you were successful. What we're doing right now is we're connecting all of the quick disconnects to one of the legs on the buttons. It doesn't matter which leg you use as your positive and which leg you use as your ground so long as you have a ground and a positive going to each button they will function perfectly fine. Um, well, I'm going to speed this up because really it's the same function on all of the buttons. Uh, but in the next shot, I will have that common daisy chain ground connected as well. That just kind of saves you some space inside of the stick to work with the cut down on the cabling to not have to have eight wires being grounded out for each button individually. So now what we're doing is we're just kind of seeing where we want to put that field termination, the DB15 port, because there is a lot of excess cabling on each individual button and input. So what I like to do is I like to mock up where I want my port and then I'm going to bring the wire down to where it needs to connect. I'm going to leave some slack. I don't want it so tight um, that it's going to rip out. I need enough relief so that when I open the lid of the cigar box, nothing is pulling. And that way, if I do want to adjust that port, you know, half an inch left, half an inch right, I've got that room. So once I've mocked up exactly where I want the button to go and how long I need that cable run to be, I'll go ahead and strip that wire out you will see that you do have to kind of get your finger wrapped around that or else it can just kind of pull against you. But there you go, you got those live wires right there. So what we are gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and give them a little bit of a twist. It isn't solid core wire, it is stranded. So just to make sure we don't have any loose strands just spitting out anywhere, I do just braid them ever so slightly with a twist. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and insert that wire into the appropriate pin for the DB15. My Super Gun is wired up for Neo Geo style pinout. I'm um, definitely check your pinout before you follow my pattern here. And I'm not giving you the pin number specifically because it is just applicable for my specific application. So you may have something completely different you need. So definitely look up your own pinout and make sure you're putting the wires in the correct pins for each individual button and input. That way you have everything taken care of. But all I do is screw down on that terminal post and that button is now connected, at least as far as the positive signal is concerned. So what we've done here is we have made those runs of all the cables a little bit shorter and we have put zip ties on everything. I mean, if you're going to spend all the time to do this, uh, cable management is definitely going to make your life a lot easier. Not only do we want that door to close on the cigar box, but we also want everything kind of just to look nice on the inside. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna use those zip ties to kind of clean up my work and make everything look as neat as possible. There's a lot of cables, so it's definitely not gonna be perfectly neat, but I do just use my wire cutters to snip those zip ties and clean that all up. So now that we have the common ground connected, uh, everything is wired up, so this stick is functional. Um, if we connected um, that DB15 port, 
to a cable into the super gun, this would function. It's not done yet, but everything is wired up. So we do know that we're good to go as far as that's concerned. And when you close the lid, everything fits perfectly fine. And that is definitely what you wanna look for is something that doesn't have any pressure on those wires when you close up the stick. So we do have that hole for the DB15 port in the back now, and we showed you how to make that hole in the first part of the series. Uh, I did use a command hook at the bottom there just to kind of get it up a little higher, because that's where I wanted it to be in line with the button. So I just used kind of like a spacer there to make sure it's flush. To make sure the stick doesn't slide around, I just use these small rubber feet. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at Micro Center, and they are dirt cheap. But when you put them on, you'll see I shake the table and the stick does not move. These things grip like crazy. 100% recommend them to keep your stick in the proper position. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna check continuity on the pins. I'm just gonna show you one here, but you'll see that button A does have continuity. So we do know that that is perfectly fine where it is. I do uh, check all the pins off camera before I plug it in, just cause it's easier. This is my favorite part. I use a beeswax compound on the stick and I just rub all of that into the wood. You'll see right in front of you, um, the stick is going to get very colorful. It's gonna look a lot richer, a lot shinier, and it's definitely something that after you've done all the wiring, um, it really brings it alive. You know, these boxes that I use definitely have some scuffs, they have some scratches. Uh, this box is from a 1992 release of cigars, but I do love kind of that character that comes with the box that you use. It's just kind of part of the charm to me. But there you go, the stick is done. Check it out. And there you go, custom made arcade fight stick. Using a Neo Geo Hyper 64 right here with Fatal Fury Wild Ambition. Most games are gonna have button input tests. So you will see that all of the buttons that I'm pushing work. So we are able to check that out. Don't need button five and six, just because this isn't a six button game. But since I tested continuity on those, I do know that they work perfectly fine. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this series. We'll definitely bring you some more um, on technicalities, on different topics we want to talk about. Um, it takes us a lot of work to make each one of these videos. So if you could do us a huge favor, uh, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and notify button down below. We've been working really hard at getting this channel's uh, follower base up, and we're definitely doing a great job on that, but we need all your help. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer each and every one of them. But if you do need any help uh, making this or if you have any questions, by all means, leave a comment and I'm happy to help. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week for some more great content. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.